Today's video is just a quick before and after look at the biggest drawback of the Claw A AI, the MSI Center M app, and the Quick Menu, along with some of the major groundbreaking fixes and improvements that MSI has rolled out over the past few weeks. And at the end, I'll let you know if I change my mind about whether or not I recommend the Claw A to other people. Okay, so let's start out with why MSI Center M is such a big deal and why you just can't delete it and expect everything to work fine. The best way to put it is like this. Playing on the Claw 8 with MSI Center M is kind of like flying a paper airplane strapped to a fighter jet. It just doesn't work. This software isn't only about the flashy extras like lighting controls and the AI sound filter and the game launcher. It also manages critical functions on the device. For example, it handles power settings like the AI mode, efficiency mode, and custom mode. This is where you can adjust the TDP yourself. And along with this, it's also tied to the quick menu button and it manages component driver up. MSI Center M also handles the BIOS updates. And here's the kicker, even the ability to use the controller itself. Long story short, no MSI Center, no controller. Unless you're willing to gamble with some third-party software, which I did and it did not work for me. So to kind of paint the picture of how Center M used to be, I'm going to play some actual video of me using it before the updates that show just how bad it was. And keep in mind, this was a brand new unit. It was only a few days old. So when I first got the MSI Claw 8 AI, I was honestly overwhelmed and not in a good way. Although I fully updated Windows and all the software, including all the apps being used by the MSI Center M and the Quick Menu, I still had so many issues with Center M and the Quick Menu that the system was basically unusable. Okay, well, let me be more precise. It ran fine unless I wanted to change the power scheme, update the BIOS, activate the AI microphone filter, change RGB settings, change the controller scheme, change windows or show the desktop, activate the in-game keyboard, or change the screen brightness. So when I tried to do any of these things, MSI Center M would stall sometimes for minutes at a time or freeze the entire device, forcing me to do hard resets just to get it responsive again. And for all you saying, well, why didn't you just control alt delete and kill the program? Well, just remember, this is a handheld. There is no physical keyboard. If it is frozen, you are stuck. So then I started scrolling around and looking for answers and I ended up on the MSI forum. While going through posts about the Claw 8 AI, I noticed a couple things that really stood out and honestly they were kind of concerning. So first off the general consensus seems to be that MSI Center M was poopies. There was a lot of agreement amongst the users that it's missing features and it overall feels pretty flawed. I kept seeing post after post from people describing the exact same technical issues I've been dealing with and some of those posts go all the way back to the beginning of the year without any fixes from MSI. And another thing that stood out was the lack of communication from MSI. So normally when a company runs an official forum for their product you'd expect them to jump in, respond to complaints, and at least confirm whether they're working on fixes or not. I mean, honestly, just say something, anything, like even lie to us. And all I saw from MSI staff was posts from someone named Jackie Wang. And even then his posts were basically just quick announcements whenever updates dropped. Now to be fair, MSI has been releasing updates, but from what I can tell up until the most recent big update, it didn't really seem like they were focusing much on improving the stability of Center M or the quick menu. But a couple of days before I was actually going to return the Claw 8, MSI released a major update to MSI Center M along with the BIOS update and it changed everything. So this update finally added the ability to remap the buttons on the back of the unit, something that should have been there from day one. But more importantly, MSI seems to have done some serious under the hood work because the stability is vastly improved. There are significantly fewer crashes and freezes in both MSI Center M and the Quick Menu. Now it's not perfect, there's still a little bit of clunkiness, but it is a huge step in the right direction. So as of now, through Center M, you can now remap any key on the device, but unfortunately not in desktop mode. But still, it's a big improvement over where we started. Let's go ahead and test MSI Center M and the Quick Menu and see how much better it's running now. So as you can see in the background, I have MSI Center M running. I have my OneNote program, you know, Microsoft Office tool running. I have Bitdefender as the virus protection on this thing. I do have to have OBS running because I want to present this to you guys. I got some Discord running in the background, which is a typical scenario. And another typical thing is I got Steam running because I'm going to be playing games on it. All right, so let's scroll around. And this is one of the problems that has been happening since the beginning, since I initially got the unit. Um, when you initially open MSI Center M, the controls are unresponsive and you have to exit out of the program. Oh, okay, it just takes a while. But as you can see, that was a pretty long time for it to become responsive. So now I'm able to kind of cycle through the options here. So again, let's go in and try to change the user scenario to endurance mode. And yeah, it seems to be switching nicely. Okay. Let's go in and access the control modes. Yeah, we're able to unmap and remap the keys. Can we switch to desktop mode? Looks like that's working. Let's check and see if there's any additional updates. Everything is up to date now. Okay, so let me show you guys some issues I've been having with the settings in MSI Center M. 
Now I don't use this AI engine. Basically what this does is it can basically change the power settings of the device and it can also kind of cycle different colors for different games and things like that. I'm not really interested in that so I just leave it off. And this is MSI Center M's Mystic Light settings where you can basically create all kinds of different lighting schemes. I don't really use these things that much but I will say I have tried to turn this off and I don't know if it cycles through different profiles if certain programs are activated, but sometimes the lights just kind of turn back on themselves. But I will say since the update, this has not happened. Some other frustrations I have are with the noise cancellation software. Now MSI's noise cancellation option here is actually really good because a lot of people don't realize that hitting all the buttons on this device, like if you're on Discord, you're gonna drive other people in Discord crazy because all they hear is you're clicking and clacking around. And what this does is it uses AI to just highlight your voice and drown out the other sounds. And as you can see, there are two microphone options here. I'm not really sure why there's two, because I'm pretty sure there's only one microphone installed on this device. No big deal. So before some of the updates that came out, every time that you activated the MSI Center M's noise canceling feature, if MSI Center M shut down or you restarted your device, you would have to recheck that setting. For now, it appears that it's been fixed. Okay, so let's talk about the key mapping on this device. So when I initially got the MSI Center M, you could not remap any of the keys. And that was a problem because these two back buttons here, but now you can actually start remapping pretty much any button. And this is really cool because it's comparable to how Steam set up the Steam Deck. Like on the Steam Deck, you can adjust any of the buttons on the Steam Deck any which ways, but not only can you adjust all the buttons on the Steam Deck, you can make modifiers that will make it like completely different buttons. Like if you pull the right trigger and press the button, it would be one key command. And if you pull the left trigger and press the same button, it's, it could be a completely different command. But honestly, I don't really need that. I think that this is just plenty for me. At this point, you can pretty much customize your claws control to whatever you need. And I also like now you can actually hotkey any of the buttons on the controller to a keyboard command. Like let's say you want to hotkey the left trigger to alt tab through programs. You just go down to the keyboard section, click on alt tab, save that out, and let's try it out. First thing is we got to go to gamepad mode. Press the left trigger and you alt tab. Good, it's working. And it looks like now you can also hotkey the controller buttons to mouse buttons and also really common Windows tasks. So here's one of my critiques here. So let's go into desktop mode here. And basically you have a list of key mappings that were preset by MSI, but you cannot change them. So when navigating through Windows, you're pretty much stuck with what they gave you. Another problem I was having when I initially got my claw was that I couldn't launch programs from MSI Center M. So let's see if we can launch a game here. All right, seems to be working. Okay, now everything seems to be working on MSI Center M much better, but let's look at the quick settings menu. So the quick setting menu is this button on the lower right here. When It's just like MSI Center M, when you initially launch the program, it's a little slow, but I've already launched the quick setting menu, so it should pop up pretty quickly here. Okay, great. So it looks like I am able to navigate the menu with the D-pad, which is what I like. Before, it would not be that responsive. It would freeze up and it would not work at all. And sometimes I'd have to actually kill the program through the task viewer. And just a tip for all you guys out there who have MSI Claws, I uninstalled the Xbox Game Bar and all the Xbox Game Peripherals, and I noticed that the quick settings have been much more stable, and I've had a lot less issues from it. Okay, so everything seems to be working when I don't have a game running, but the big question is, how is this stuff going to run when I'm actually playing a game? Because most of the problems I've run into with the installed MSI software were when I'm actually gaming. I've also noticed that when I'm playing games in full screen, serious problems are more likely to come up, like crashes and freezes, and that's when I was having to hard reset the device. It should also be noted that when I have the efficiency mode activated, MSI Center M and the quick menu were virtually unusable. So we'll try that out as well. Okay, it is full screen. Everything seems to be working fine now. So let's try putting on endurance mode. All right, I'm gonna pull up the quick menu. All right, it's noticeably more sluggish now, but it's still working, which is a change from last week. Okay, so now I'm stuck here. Oh, there it goes. All right, so now it's a little bit more stable. It is very sluggish when you're in endurance mode. Okay, now for the big test. Every time I tried to do this when I initially got my claw, it crashed the system. Let's see if I can pull up MSI Center M and not have to do that. Looks like it works. 
All right, so now the big question. Do these updates and added features move my Claw 8 into my pleasant surprises? Absolutely. With the latest updates to MSI Center M, along with the BIOS update, this is an incredible machine worthy of the price. It's here, AAA gaming on a handheld. And personally, I'm thankful for MSI fixing these issues, but seeing it took almost a year to fix this stuff, I'm thankful in a way like when your deadbeat dad shows up with your child support, but you're already in your 30s. So MSI, hey. Thanks. Although MSI appears to have fixed the major problems with Center M and the Quick Menu, I still want to point out there is still definitely room for improvement. Let's go through my wish list for feature improvements. I already mentioned this, but the next big feature MSI should focus on is the ability to create game-specific profiles that automatically switch your controller maps when launching different games. MSI really needs to step up here. Just give us native in-game profiles for controller configurations that automatically switch when launching different titles. As it stands right now, switching is such a pain. You have to manually go into MSI software, remap your keys, go back into the game, and when when you switch to a new game you got to do it all over again there is a workaround though you can use the steam launcher and allow it to control your inputs on your controller but it gets really confusing especially because not all the buttons on the claw are recognized by steam for example so if you want to map the m1 and f2 buttons or adjust the gyro functionality you have to switch back and forth from msi center m and steam which makes it really clunky and confusing the next thing is keeping in mind you have to navigate windows on this device using the gamepad another wish list item the ability to remap the desktop controls this would be super helpful for tailoring the controller setup for each user for example i'd love to press one button to open the file explorer and another to launch a chrome search tab now it looks like this is in the gamepad mode but let's incorporate this into the desktop mode too i mean this kind of customization already exists in third-party apps like controller companion so it's definitely doable msi just has to do it other than that if msi can just fix the remaining stability issues with the quick settings this unit would go from a rocky start to near perfection all right guys in closing i just want to say that i was one of the lucky ones that bought the msi claw 8 right before they made these critical fixes to msi center m so i didn't have to deal with it for too long so i want to end this video by having a moment of silence for those that bought this thing at launch and then immediately sold it or suffered to the point they gave up on the Claw 8 completely.